welcome to the Modern Skein podcast. My name is Sharon Graff and I'm the owner of the Modern Skein, which is a yarn shop here in Montgomery, Texas. Thank you so much to all of our returning viewers and welcome back. And if you're a new viewer, welcome and we hope you stick around. And if you do enjoy the podcast, we'd love it if you gave us a thumbs up and subscribe and hit notifications, which is the little bell down there so that you get notified every time we upload a new episode. We are on track to be uploading a new episode every week so far. I think we've done it for the past four weeks in a row. Yay! So <laughs> thanks so much for sticking around and enjoying the podcast and giving us that motivation to keep it going because clearly you guys are loving it right now. If you are hearing that terrible beeping noise, don't mind that and hopefully it cannot get picked up by the microphone because it's really annoying me right now and it's a leftover issue <laughs> from all of our freezing cold blizzard snow apocalypse funness. Um, the alarm system guys haven't made it out, power outage, battery issues, whatnot. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for, for tuning in and let's get started. <sighs> well, it has been a crazy week with the snowmageddon, if you will. By the way, grab your warm beverage or cool beverage or whatever. I'm having a warm beverage because it's still a little chilly this morning. I wish it would warm up. I mean, it's gonna be warm today. It's gonna be, I think we're gonna hit like 78. <gasps> it's gonna be so glorious, so glorious. I'm so happy and it's sunny. And then the rest of the week, it's rain, which I'm not happy about. I need my sunshine. Clearly, I need my sunshine. Yesterday, I walked. <laughs> I walked five miles outside in the sun. That's how excited I was about being outside in the sunshine and the warmth, that I actually walked five miles. <sighs> yeah, I normally don't walk that much, but it was just so nice to be out in the sun. Anyway. Grab your beverage and let's get started. So, because we had snowmageddon, you would think I got a lot of knitting time done, but no, because we ended up losing power, losing water. We had water uh, pipe breaks, but luckily they were outside, so didn't have any issues. The knock on wood, the shop had no issues whatsoever. We um, only lost power for a very short time here at the shop and no water issues. So that was a blessing. And um, so, yeah, but needless to say, I did not get nearly as much knitting time as I had anticipated slash hoped for. It's been very busy right now in this stage of life, which I'm not displeased with at all. I'm loving what we're doing with the shop and work and everything else is just, it's cutting into some knitting time, people. So I either have to knit faster, which I already knit pretty fast, so I don't think that's gonna happen, or I need to purposefully carve out a little bit more time each day to knit, which I think that is doable. I would say get up earlier, but I already get up wicked early so I can work out. So um, that's not gonna happen. But I need to just be purposefully, and I actually have the past couple nights, except for last night, I was just too tired, but purposefully knitting at minimum an hour every night. Um, so I did get one project actually cast on and completed during the snowpocalypse that we had. It was a one skein project, so I mean, don't be that excited. But I think it's real cute, and I think it's a perfect little pattern for your one skeins that you have lying around that you wanna do a little something with them, but you don't know what to do. Maybe you don't wanna add them into a marled or a fade, or maybe they don't go with anything else that you, you have or you wanna do. Um, or it was just a special, excuse me, I'm gonna yawn. Hmm, excuse me, um, a special skein maybe from a trip or a new dyer that you've never tried before, or maybe like you picked up one of the chlorindrod skeins um, or a special 
I don't know, maybe a special suburban stitcher, maybe a skein of fun, 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 or one of her birthday colorways she did for me a while back. Um, just a special skein that you've been hanging on to. So this is Spring Thing by Espostri Co. It's a free pattern and it's a small little shawl. You can see it's a one skein. So it's like a little shawlette. Uh, the pattern is pretty adaptable to making it larger. Um, it basically gives you a pattern repeat and you do that until you have a certain stitch count, which you can then easily just keep going to your desired stitch count um, and then do section two until you're back down to the three stitches or whatever it is that you end on. Um, so this is a very adaptable pattern. So you could end up with a much larger two skein or even three skein shawl if you want it. But this is it. I actually have not yet wet blocked this. I just steamed it here at the shop and then forgot about it. <laughs> Meant to bring it home and wet block it. So I'm probably gonna do that tonight. Um, and then I'll take some pictures and post on Instagram most likely. But you can see this is just with a little steam block. It came out quite nice. Now, so it's one skein of Chlorindrod. It's called Jellyfish at My Feet is the colorway. It's like a peach with neutral and green and yellow and orange speckles. Um, and then I did the eye cord in antique leather from um, Red Stag Fiber. And then on this bottom part of the eye cord, you're supposed to do these little fringy bits. I think they look a little sparse. Um, so I'm, y'all, I just dropped it in my coffee. <sighs> Sign of things to come today. Anywho, now I definitely have to take this home and wet block it to get the coffee out. Anywho, I think it's just on the tassel. Um, I do plan on redoing these tassels because they look a little pathetic. Um, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, get some of this coffee off, is um, make the tassels a little bit bigger. So I did two strands folded over. I think I'm gonna do four strands folded over on a couple of these and see if I like that look better, make it a little full. If I still don't like that, my thought is to make the little mini pom-poms with our pom-pom makers that we saw in the shop. Um, I think it's one inch or one and a half inch size and then attach those. I think that would look really cute. So that is my spring thing. Again, pattern is free, it's Boss Tricot available on Ravelry. And it is asymmetrical, you can see. It is asymmetrical. So you increase and then you do kind of a rapid decrease. Um, it's all garter stitch with simple increases. I think the increase was knit front and back. So it's not even a make one. So it's a very simple beginner style pattern, but you end up with a really cute. And one skein like this, and I would say I had I didn't weigh it, but I probably had 15, maybe 20 grams left of my ball. So I could have gone a few more repeats to, or had enough to do the edge in the same color. But see, it's just enough. Of course, I've got a turtleneck on, but it's just enough to throw around with these little short ones. I always love to knot my ends. And then it's like a cowl. You don't have to worry about it falling off. You can zhuzh it up. See, I think like the little tassel just looks sad, like a little pokey end. Um, you can also, if you didn't like the double end, you can tuck that under and then you just have that. And it wouldn't look quite as thick because I've got a thick turtleneck on underneath. But yeah, spring thing, this boss Trico. So. That is that finished object. Uh, let's see. Then, so I started and completed that in the week of snow. I did work on some of my other projects and I did start one other project. First, let me show you my other whips. So I have been working, not as much as I should, but I still have been working on my test knit. Look, 
look how much we've got now from the sleeve. Woohoo! But I will say, especially at night, I don't work on this one as much because it's dark yarn. And I think I'm officially over cold weather. I don't want to knit with bulky. This isn't bulky, this is Aaron weight. But I really don't want to knit with anything over DK. I'm like, give me fingering, give me DK, give me sport. I want to think and dream of warm weather. I want to wear flip flops and maxi dresses and wide leg pants and tank tops. I mean, this is a cute sweater. I love it. It's from a local boutique here. But seriously, I need warm weather. I am going to be that quintessential person that, you know, is 80 years old and wants to retire to Florida because she needs constant warm weather and a beach. I want to retire to Florida. Yeah, probably wouldn't happen, but I can dream. Actually, really what I would like to do, you probably don't even care. In my dreams, I would love to, I say retire, uh, in my old age, eventually go to the Caribbean and yeah, open like a little beachside hut restaurant bar thingamajiggy and live down on the beach and wear swimsuits and cover-ups and flip-flops or bare feet all the time. It'd be perfect. But I digress. I would still knit, by the way, if I was in the Caribbean. I would, because I, I do. Anytime we've been able to do Caribbean cruises, I'm knitting constantly, knitting at the beach, with wool, with cotton, with linen, it doesn't matter. I still knit. I would knit like all the little cute, open, breezy, cover-up style, open cardigan thingy-majiggies. And I mean, it's at night and you go on a boat, it's breezy and it's cool. You need a little cover-up sweater thingy. <sighs> we are going down a rabbit hole today. Okay, um, what else? What else did I work on? Oh, okay. So I talked to you guys about knitting the Porsche. Um, I did cast it on and then promptly ripped it out because my idea of using these two yarns while for anything that was not lace or cables would be amazing because it gave us really cool marled effect and I'm going to see if Josh can insert a photo here um, but it really hid the cable um, slash stitch definition, which the Porsche has some really interest, intricate stitch cabling um, and textured stitches, and I didn't want to lose that. So back to the drawing board. I, st I still want to use this for something. I don't know that it's going to be the Porsche though, as I just threw it. Um, I don't know that that's going to be the Porsche. However, Bichon Bouche does have a mohair that would go and be more tonal of a match. So I might be doing that. Um, but I also thought about, clearly I haven't cast it on yet, doing this pairing. So this is Sandezgar and Light Beige. And this is of course beige from Espace Tricot. That would be a really pretty color. I just don't know that I want the portrait. I mean, I know originally this is way closer to the original colors because they did like um, kind of a gray beige off-white cream color for theirs. So this would be very similar to the original colors or color of Portia. But I don't know that I want a cream colored shawl. This would still, I still think this would be really, really pretty. <sighs> decisions, decisions. So I have to decide on that. If I wanna do this combo for something else and do this for Portia and then find a matching mohair to go with it. In fact, bear with me. I want to pull the Bisha Bouche mohair.
Okay. So see, this is the Biche and Bouche mohair that I would put with it. So this is um, La Petite Silk and Mohair Red Brown. And then this is Sanda's Garn Sunday. I'm afraid I don't have the bold and here. I believe it's rust. But I could be very wrong. But anyway, that's that's an option. Okay. I have done nothing on my CV. Um, for whatever reason, again, like I said, I'm really not wanting to work with worsted weight, Aaron weight, bulky, anything. I'm wanting to protest against winter. Um, so there's been that. Um, but I did cast on a DK weight sweater. I don't know if you saw my post a few back, um, for February, which I've fallen behind on. Goodness, it's almost over with. You'd think I'd be able to do that. I had posted my number 13 in my queue on Ravelry was the Camaro sweater by uh, Tennis Lavely. Um, so that got me thinking. It's been in my queue for ever and a day. Um, sorry, there is no hair in my coffee. Um, I had had it forever and a day um, in my queue, and I was like, okay, we're snowed in. I can't get any cute yarn from the shop. What do I have in my stash that I could use? Well, I just happened to have, from several years ago, um, if you've ever watched Christina of Chelsea Yarns, her husband, Red Bank Mike, um, for a while and he started doing it again. Made what he called the big kahunas, which this has already been used up, so it's not, it was like this big. Um, the big kahuna, which was either fingering or DK weight, but it was these magic knotted balls of yarn that he would wind up, or big cakes. So huge, um, you know, yardage, anywhere from like 800 to almost 2,000 yards, all wound up basically made your own self-striping ball. And I was like, that would be so cool for the Camaro. DK weight, my big kahuna was DK, it was a match made in heaven. So I promptly cast it on. And I'm gonna show you, I just switched the needles last night so you could actually see and the stitches weren't all crowded together. But I really love the unique increasing because it, it's kind of raglan-ish, but different. So this is the Camaro. I think that's part of the reason I love this because it has the V-neck, but then it has these really cool increases on these two sides. You have your V and then the back has these increases right here and then here for the shoulders. So it's just a really unique construction um, to get you that fitted um, yoke, but still retaining the V and then giving you like these side, almost like, it's almost like you're creating a hexagon, kind of, but not. But you can kind of see the shaping so you have like two, a flat point, and then a flat point, and then another flat point, and then going into the point. I'm butchering this explanation, but if you go look on Ravelry at the Camaro sweater, you'll see the lines when she's wearing it. You know, your center V, then the line here, and then the back, you'll see the different lines um, where you do your increases, which just really gives it a really cool architectural kind of vibe. So, um, I did, working with the first two colors, I went ahead and broke them when I had the amount of color that I wanted. I actually left extra of this first color because I'm thinking, because it's rolling on me, that I'm gonna go back and pick up um, and do either maybe an I-cord edge around or pick up 
and knit and bring it in a little bit more. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with that, but I'm not a fan of just the rolled edge, which is how she leaves it. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards an I cord, but I'm not 100% positive. Um, and then, so I cut this one off and then rolled up the extra. And then I did also the same with this dark color. But then the yellow is the first one that I just let run into the next color. And my color, you can see here, so this is my back, which is where you would normally change your color. And my color change happened right here. So it's not very far off. If it's gonna show in the front, I'll just cut it early and we'll move it in the back. But it's not that big of a deal to me if I have to end up cutting this or not. But I think from basically now on, I'm gonna use up as much of each color as possible. And then when I run out of colors, I should be kind of about where she ended. Then I'm going to switch to a different neutral color. What? I don't know yet, but it will be Red Stag. I do know that much and it'll be DK state decay most likely with the colors that are in here I'm thinking this is a wrong base but I'm thinking the castle rock the gray I think that would be a nice neutral finish to the colors that you've already seen in here um, so that's my thought for that sweater. Um, and that's just kind of a, I'm almost treating this one as kind of a palette cleanser. I just work on it when I'm sick and tired of working on anything else. I'm not pushing myself that I have to have it finished by a certain time or anything. Uh, just kind of letting it go with the flow, if you will. I feel like, I feel like I'm on the verge of a knitting funk. And so I'm trying to not get in a knitting funk by not pushing myself. Um, I do have a couple knit alongs that we're doing here at the shop that are coming up. So I have to not burn out for those obviously. Um, so I'm basically giving myself a little bit of grace on some of my own personal projects, if you will. Cause like the Camaro, yeah, I'll bring it up here cause people want to see it and everything, but it's, I'm not using shop yarn, you know, I'm not, not like officially a store sample, if you will. It is truly for me. Um, so, yeah. Um, speaking of, let's see, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Because there's no point in showing you CV because there's been no progress done on it. I do want to share with you guys um, some ideas for the Stephen West Knit Along that will be starting in March. Um, I am going to be sending out the details as far as the in-person meeting times and then our virtual um, in person, our virtual in-person, no, was, that doesn't exist. Our virtual um, Zoom meeting dates and times. Um, that will be going out later this week in our newsletter. So if you're not signed up for the newsletter, go ahead and get on that. Um, and then I'm just gonna go through some pattern ideas. Of course, we have the Stephen West books over here that you can grab. All of his patterns are available either on Ravelry or on Gumroad. If you're not on Ravelry, Gumroad's a great place to get his patterns. But um, the rules, if you will, is you can knit any Stephen West pattern, whether it be a hat, whether it be a shawl, whether it be a sweater, it does not matter what pattern you choose. To, to join in, all you have to do is cast on when we cast on, so March 1st cast on. And then what you're going to do is if you've purchased the yarn for that cast on, then you'll be eligible for an in-store prize. If you are using stash or if you bought yarn at a different shop, that's perfectly fine. You can still join in our knit along. You just would not be eligible for the prize drawing at the end. And of course, to be eligible for the prize drawing, you do have to finish the garment by the end date. Have I set the end date yet? No, but you will see that in the email as well. So some pattern ideas. Um, this one is a fun one. This, even though it's huge, it only takes three skeins of yarn. 
three different colors. This is Color Craving. This is a fun one. Really unique construction with the big roll holes in the middle there. Um, and like I said, it's three colors, um, three skeins of fingering weight yarn. If you did like me and you wanted to use Surrey for color three, then that would take two skeins of Surrey um, just because there's less yardage on Surrey than there is on the skein of fingering. But in this one, I used two skeins. No, I didn't. I used a skein of undercover otter, a skein of ching fiber, and a skein of, or two skeins of ching fiber surrey, melted baby surrey. That's a fun one. And then um, for hat idea, he has painting bricks hat. That's fairly new. I've also done the, where is it? It's not up there. Um, building blocks hat. I think that's at home. Um, building blocks hat. There's yes checks, which is actually a free pattern of his. It's a fun hat. Um, there's also, of course, the new, um, what does he call it? Painting honeycombs jacket. That would be really cool. I have a lady that's doing that as part of the knit along. She's doing it though out of cotton, um, a cotton linen blend Mojave um, for our weather down here, which I thought was a brilliant idea. Another one, if you wanna get kind of more of that sampler style, this is Fanta Stitch by Stephen West. Um, there is no brioche in this. Um, and this, I did not knit this. This was knit by one of our fabulous customers, Diane Jordan. But you can see, this one is seven different colors. The pattern originally calls for Surrey or mohair, but she just did this in all seven colors of fingering weight. Um, this is all life in the long grass yarn. It's beautiful. Uh, let's see here. Then you've got, um, oh, this one's real pretty. This one is Marie, Moherino Medley. This one is three skeins, no, four skeins of fingering weight and one skein of mohair. It's more one of the smaller shawls of his. Um, and more of just a little rectangular wrap. So that's a great option. Uh, again, no brioche in this one either. And then this one, which we did over last summer, a lot of us, uh, get this out of here, is Lava Lake. This would be perfect for the new fades we got from Saru and Stitcher or Chlorindrod, but this is five color and you knit it edge to edge and you get that beautiful fade pattern. This is a very nice, simple, semi-mindless. There's just enough detail in these little yarn overs to keep you going um, and not get bored with it. This was a very fun knit, very addictive knit because you just, just a few more rows and I can change color. And then you can see how the next color fades in. So that's fun. Of course, he's got all sorts of new patterns out like the painting honeycombs, painting bricks, the slip stravaganza, the hyper knitting patterns. Um, there are cowls, there are brioche patterns, there are sweaters. Uh, I'm actually thinking of doing the Marled Mania sweater for mine. I haven't picked my colors yet. Um, but I'm thinking that's what I'm going to cast on is the Marled Mania sweater. And then, um, what else? Well, you could always do even like the little baby penguinos, a penguano. I love my penguano. Um, there's shawls. There are all sorts of patterns. There's, I think, over 250 some odd patterns that he has. So lots of different options. Um, so yeah, we'd love to see you join us for that. Um, knit along, like I said, the information will go out this later this week. As far as other things in the shop, we've gotten a huge restock of, um, or for the first time, not really a restock, of the Earth Fingering Weight Yarns. I wanna show you this. This is a beautiful shawl that you could do um, called the Papillon or the Butterfly Shawl. Isn't that gorgeous? So gorgeous. Um, 
but this just takes one skein of your solid color for your background and two skeins of the gradient um, from Earth, which is the Earth unique fingering. So we have some predetermined kits that include the pattern, or you can pick your own, or we can help you pick out your own as well. And then we also did restock um, Lane issue 10 for those of you wanting that book for Snowy Forest or for the Porsche um, or any of the other amazing patterns in there like Grounded or I um, can't think of some of the other ones, but there's beautiful patterns. And then we also restocked 52 weeks of sock. Um, so get those because um, they're restocked. 52 weeks of sock is a great book. I love it even though I'm not a super sock knitter. Um, <clears throat> just some beautiful gorgeous patterns and photography and everything so I think that about wraps it up for today um, we got a bunch of boxes in that we got to go through and put in inventory so be sure and tune into our Instagram lives and you can always check out the recorded lives on IGTV um, that's usually when we talk about new patterns coming out and yarn pairings and the new items that come into the shop and of course, subscribe to the newsletter to stay up to date with all of our knit alongs and other information as well. So thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.